In this video, I want to look at how you can use JavaScript to create HTML elements, DOM elements, on the fly in code. So what happened in the previous video? If I, if I run this P5.js project, you can see here there's, some, there's, a, there's an H1 element, there's a paragraph element, and there's a canvas. Where did those things come from? So, the, uh, so let's, in the previous video, I looked at how in, in the HTML file, you can add things inside body. Like this H1 element gets added and appears on the page. This paragraph element gets added and appears on the page. But there's a canvas on the page. I don't see the canvas here. So how did that canvas get added? The way that canvas got, got added was in JavaScript. Create canvas 200, 200. So if you want to have things already on the page that you want to sort of like manually set their layout and content, you can put that stuff in the HTML file. If you want your code to generate elements, you can generate those elements from your P5 file. And in this scenario, um, I'm generating just the canvas. Now, incidentally, you could certainly manually add a canvas as a tag and access it uh, from JavaScript, but this is not something that I'm really doing in these videos. Um, I want to sort of focus on the, the canvas is kind of, for P5, is kind of like a special case. Um, uh, and, and create canvas using P5 is kind of a nice way of just quickly getting the canvas onto the page. That aside, what I want to look at is what if you want your code to make the paragraph? Or what if you want your code to make that header element? And uh, how does that work? So uh, you can see to make the canvas, I said create canvas. <sighs> Magic erased whiteboard because I had a technical difficulty, but now I'm back here. Um, what I'll do here now is make a list of some of these other create functions. So you know that there is create canvas. This makes a canvas appear on the page. And then there are several other create blank functions available in P5.js to add other kinds of HTML elements. So here are a few. Create p, create div, create button, create image, IMG, the list goes on and on and on and on. So in the, uh, in the uh, description of this video, when I upload it, I'll add a link to the, the, the DOM reference where you can see all of these, you know, the list of all of these functions. Um, so let's now, now a couple things about this. Um, all of these are going to need some sort of argument that goes in here. And it's going to be different. So what do you need to create a paragraph versus what do you need to create a button? Create sliders, a really interesting one that I would like to get to at some point. But let's start off simply with just create p. Ah, and I forgot sort of a crucial detail. But let's start off with create p. <laughs> and I'll come back to that detail. So right here in setup, after create canvas, I'm going to say create p. This is, uh, you know, uh, what's something besides, I don't know, my favorite color is purple. Sometimes it's pink. Every once in a while it's like orange, but mostly it's purple. <laughs> I know you guys need to know this about me. Uh, okay, now here we go. And look at this. Look at that. There's another paragraph on the page. <laughs> I'm maybe a little bit too excited about this. I don't usually drink coffee and I had some coffee today. Bad idea. Um, so here you can see, here's the header that I put in the HTML, H1 tag. Here's the paragraph that I put in the HTML. Here's the canvas that I created with JavaScript. And here's the paragraph that I created with JavaScript. So there's a big question here, which is, why would I do one versus the other? And I think what we can do, what I can do to answer that question right now is just say, just breathe. Right now, it doesn't really matter. Put it one place, put it the other place. Who really cares? <laughs> um, you just want to like experiment, play around, get stuff happening on the page. As I show you more and more examples, as we go through more and more scenarios, I think there will the, that question, the answers to that question will reveal it themselves. The answers will reveal themselves. But uh, in other words, different scenarios, there can be advantages to why you might do want to generate some DOM elements on the fly. Uh, you know, maybe you're randomly picking different texts. Uh, maybe you're making a thousand of them, right? Um, versus whether you want to like set some stuff up in advance. So that's sort of like an important topic. I want to revisit that question over and over again. Right now, I just want to see that both are possible. Um, okay, so, uh, and, and we can do some weird things, like I can add function, like I don't have to just do that in setup, 
I can add in the mouse press function, right? The mouse press function, which fires anytime I click the mouse anywhere on the page, right? Anytime I click, look, I'm getting another paragraph. And I can scroll down, and we can see. And I could start to do things like, uh, you know, my, my favorite, I could say my favorite number is, uh, and then give a random number between 0 and 10. And uh, let me give myself a little more room here. Right now I'm going to run this. And you can see, click, click, click. I get a different random number. And so this is a reason why I might want to generate those elements in JavaScript. Because I want the number to be random. Because I want to do it when the user clicks the mouse. So I don't know how many times the user is going to click the mouse. Whereas I'm answering the question now. I know that at the top, I just wanted to say, I am making a video. So I can put that in the HTML in advance. There's no reason for me to create that in JavaScript. So this is this balance that we need to strike. So create canvas, create P. There are other ones, create button, create image, create div. My suggestion to you might be just try like adding them in your code, see what happens. But I do want to emphasize something. Um, in this particular sketch, uh, there is an H1 element at the top. I'll say to you, <laughs> I'm getting exercise here. There is no create H1 function in P5. Now, you could say to yourself, like, well, why not? Isn't that an oversight? Shouldn't there be a create H1? I really think there should be a create H1. And we could have this discussion. But I think the point is P5 includes some create X functions for the sort of most common DOM elements you might want to generate with code. There are a lot of kind of HTML tags. There's list tags and ordered list tags and under unordered list tag, we, it, just, it would be unrealistic and would sort of bloat the reference to have a create blank for every single kind of HTML element. For, so in all other cases, you can always say create element. The create element function allows you to make any DOM element, any HTML element, and the first argument is the tag itself, and the second argument is you know, the content that goes inside that tag. So let's look at adding that right now. Here, if I come back, in setup, I can say create element h1. And then I can say uh, my favorite numbers below. And now, when I run this, you can see I made this header in uh, JavaScript. I made the canvas, then this h1 element, and now every time I click the mouse, I get one of the paragraph elements below. So this is what's possible for you now. You can, this, this JavaScript code is sitting, is loaded into this page. It runs as soon as the page loads. The page has some content built into it, and then JavaScript adds some content to it. It adds a canvas, it adds an h1 element, and it adds some paragraphs. So I think um, I'm going to stop this. And so what I would say to you now is, in, for your next exercise, take the sketch you made before with a few DOM, a few things in the HTML. Now try adding some HTML elements from P5 itself using these P5 functions. And the next video, I'm going to show you some tricks for how to manipulate those elements, um, have them uh, change and do some things on the fly. OK, so I'm going to hit stop now. Uh, and stop.